before we start getting into some, some beefier mathematics. Let's talk about properties, properties of vectors. All right. Well, we already proved one of them. I know that V plus W equals W plus V, right? That's called the commutative property. This is the commutative property. How about two? Now think about this. Is U plus V plus W equal to U plus V plus W, right? Is it? Well, of course it is. I mean, think about it. If, it. if this commutative property, I could prove it just by playing with vectors, but it's relatively easy to see that that's going to work out. Do you remember what this property was called with addition? It's called the associative property. In other words, I can associate give property. I can associate these vectors individually, or I can associate them sort of all at once. In other words, you can group them, which is, which is really helpful. All right, how about this? What do you think that V plus zero is? Well, that's an interesting question. What is this thing? What do you think that the zero vector is? Well, what is the zero vector? Let's go back here. What's the zero vector? Well, the zero vector is just simply a dot. That's all it is. It has no direction, and it has no force. So the zero in vector speak is just a point that doesn't have the ability to exert force in any direction at all. It's just a point. So what is V plus W? What does it have to be? Well, if I take a vector and I add nothing to it, what I really get back is V. That's kind of cool, huh? All right, how about this guy? Just, I mean, think about this. This one's actually pretty easy. What is V plus negative V? What's it got to be? What's your, what's your intuition say? Well, it's zero. Now, that one's easy to prove. Watch. If this is V, right, and this is negative V, so I'll grab this point right here, huh? same length, opposite. This is negative V. Now, if I'm going to add these, V plus negative V, that means I take the tail of the second, attach it to the head of the first, right? And then I send this guy back to there, and then I go tail to tail and head to head. What? How's that work, right? Because I'm going to, uh, there's nothing there. I end up right back at the same point, and this right here is a zero vector. It's pretty awesome, isn't it? So those are the properties of vectors. Now let's start having some fun. All right, let's talk about multiplying vectors, but we're going to keep it simple. And you've seen this notation before. Back in Algebra 2, we talk about something called scalar, scalar multiplication. Multiplication. All right, now think about this. If I take a vector, now I'm gonna, let's start with an easy vector, all right? I'm going to go over 3. Let's see, you'll start it here. This is the initial side, or initial point, and the term 1, 2, 3, 4, right? All right, now I'm going to call that V, all right? If you notice, I went over 3, and I went up 4. What happens if I do 2V? Now, what does that do? Theoretically, that should double the length of V, shouldn't it? I mean, think about that. That's exactly what it does. Instead of going over, so let me change colors real quick. So if I start down here and I double the length of V, right? Then instead of this thing being, I mean, how long is this? Can you tell? If I went over three and I went up four, can you already kind of smell the direction that this is starting to go? We're going to have these right angles. If this is three and this is four, that's going to have to be a five, right? So if I want to go over 10, now I'm going to go over one, two, three, four, five, six, remember, and up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Everything got scaled by a factor of two. By the way, those should have arrows on them. Let's make sure we have those. This is twice as long. All of the sides are twice as long. Does that make sense? Now, I can multiply by negative 1. I mean, I can multiply by all kinds of things. All right? If I take some alpha times v, this just turns into alpha v. If I take 0 times v, what do you think happens? Well, just like any other multiplication with 0, I get 0, right? If I take negative 1, times v, what happens? It turns it into negative v. All right, does that make sense? Right on. So really, you guys, all that we're doing right now is we're establishing some vocab, all right? That's all that we're doing. Let's talk about the magnitude of a vector. There, we need some notation. The magnitude, magnitude or length, really, of a vector 
vector, that just equals the quote unquote length, right? Now we got a notation for this, and the notation is it's kind of this double absolute value of v. Now you may say, well, wait a second, Ripley, what's the difference between the magnitude of the vector and the vector itself? Well, remember, a vector has both magnitude and direction. Magnitude is just a value that indicates the length of the vector, okay? Now, if you think about this, what, what must the magnitude of a vector, again, this is just vocab, so don't freak out on me, what must the magnitude of a vector B. Well, it's a distance, isn't it? It's a length. So it's always going to be greater than or equal to zero. So these are these right here, let's just call properties. Properties of the magnitude of a vector. Right? We know it's got to be greater than or equal to zero. And we know it equals zero if and only if what? What's the only vector that has a length of zero? The zero vector. Right? That one, that one, it's kind of like, what in the event? <laughs> of course that's got to happen. Now think about this one for a sec. So let's, let's actually number these. How about this? What is the magnitude of negative v with respect to v itself? Well, how did we build negative v? Remember this guy over here? The magnitude of negative v, it's exactly the same length. It's just in an opposite direction. Well, if it's the exact same length, then they got to have the same magnitude because magnitude just means length. Okay, and then there's one last one that's actually pretty important and it's pretty useful. If I take, if I want to know the magnitude like over here, notice that what I did is I took 2 times v, right? The magnitude of a scalar times the vector is actually equal to the absolute value of the scalar. Now remember, I can multiply by negative 2 here if I wanted and it would just flip the direction of the vector, right? So I got to do the absolute value of that thing because it really doesn't matter in terms of the length times the magnitude of the vector. And there you have it. Now, we're finally to a point where we need to start talking about vectors a little more algebraically. We definitely want to talk about we're just kind of begging to have some stuff happen here because we got this horizontal component and we have this vertical component. Now that word component all right, is going to be used, it's going to be useful in helping to define a vector. A vector can be written in a number of ways. I've already shown you one way already, right? Remember it starts at P and it finishes at Q, right? That's useful if I want to know where it starts and where it finishes, but there's another way to do it. I can write it like this, AB, and this is called the component. Compo this guy is called the component vector. Now what this says is, what's it kind of look like, ladies and gentlemen? What's it look like? Well, it looks like a point, doesn't it? Except it's got these little crazy brackets instead of a point that's just got parentheses. Well, remember, a vector can live anywhere. So if I can take a vector that starts at some p and it finishes at some q, right, initial and terminal, then I can take that same vector and I can move it so that its initial side starts at the origin at 0, 0, and it finishes at the point A, comma B. Now, that implies, if I name the thing V, so this was V before and this is V now, right? Because I can move them wherever I want, still has the same length, still has the same direction. The way in which we write that is V equals AB. Now, why is it called the component vector? Well, we already discussed this. It's because this guy right here is the horizontal. It's written just like a point, right? Horizontal component. And this guy right here is the vertical component. All right? So that is a way in which we can represent a horizontal, or excuse me, any vector as being, having its initial side at the origin, its terminal side at some value, and we can look at it and say, oh, I know what this vector is. I know what it looks like. For example, let's do just a couple of quick examples. How about v equals negative uh, 1, 3? And then how about w equals uh, 2, comma, 5? All right, those are two vectors. Let's graph them both. Well, once you've got it in this notation, it's really helpful, isn't it? Well, V is negative 1 up 3, so V starts here, starts at the origin, and it finishes, damn, 
Sorry, you guys. Darn. I didn't curse. I swear to goodness. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, let's try that again. It's easier for me to, to go this way for whatever reason. This guy right here is negative 1, 3. That's its name. Well, it's, that's its component name. I can name the thing V. Now I can go over 1, 2 and up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? This is the point 2, 5 if I want to write that point. But since I'm talking about a vector whose name is W, looks like a vector, I say that W is equal to 2, 5. Isn't that cool? That's a really useful way to describe vectors. All right. Now, think about this. Let's say that I have vector. Let's say that I have vector PQ. All right. And P equals, let's say that P equals 1, 2 and Q. These are points, right? These are not vector names. This remember, this tells me it starts at P and it finishes at Q. And let's say that Q is, I don't know, what do you want to say? Let's go 3 and negative 1, right? So I know the thing starts at 1, comma 2, and I know that it finishes at 1, 2, 3, comma, negative 1, right? So this guy is PQ. However, I want to write this thing as a component vector, which means I want to stick its tail. That sounds weird. I want to stick its tail right here. And then I want to have it finish somewhere down here, right? I went down 1, 2, 3, and over 1, 2. 1, 2, 3, over 1, 2. Alex, was that all you needed? Yeah. All right, that was Alex. Everybody say hi to Alex. So I want to know this thing's name. Well, you can already tell by what I did. I went over 2 and down 3. So I go 2 and negative 3, right? However, what if I have a general one where I've got PQ, where P is equal to X naught, y not, and q is equal to x1, y1. Well, can you tell what I did? Let me think about it. Couldn't I simply write v, if I'm going to name my new vector v, which I'll name it up here, and we'll double check. Look, really all I'm doing is I'm taking the horizontal, I take the difference between the horizontal components. So this is just going to be x1 minus x0, and then y1 minus why not? It kind of works like a slope, doesn't it? This is going to be how much I change horizontally, and this is going to be how much I change vertically. So my V in this case, let's make sure it works. Let's see. If I did 3 minus 1, that's the horizontal, right? And then I do negative 1 minus 2, that's the vertical. That's negative 1 minus 2. What do I end up with? I end up with 2 comma negative 3. That's this guy. So I've got 2, negative 3. And that's just another way to refer to your vector. Isn't that nice? It's a real simple way to think about vectors. All right. Well, there's the bell. Um, I'm going to have to meet you back here in another part. I know this is a long section, but we're going to take some time on this. So, so don't sweat it, okay? All right.